Today's lecture begins a series of lectures on the cranial nerves. And today we'll start with cranial nerve number one. Cranial nerve number one is termed the olfactory nerve. Now the olfactory nerve exits out of the foramen, which is termed the cripriform plate, which is seen on this diagram of the skull up here in the cribriform plate. Now, the olfactory nerve is a sensory type of cranial nerve. Its function is mainly for smell, and the result of a lesion is termed anosmia. Now, here in the cribriform plate, if we look at this diagram on the side, you can see that olfactory fibers come in through the little foramina within the ethmoid bone and they all join together to become the olfactory bulb. And as you can see from this diagram, which represents the midbane, brain, pons, and medulla, the olfactory nerve is not actually a cranial nerve which comes from the brainstem, yet enters from high above it. So, once the olfactory fibers have formed the olfactory bulb, it traverses back posteriorly into the cranium and then eventually splits into medial and lateral stria. The lateral stria continue on around the uh, area of the cranium and allow to receive information to the cerebral cortex on smell. And the medial stria continue on to back where they eventually meet up with each other. Now, the causes of anosmia, as you can see down here, include infection and environmental factors, which tend to be temporary forms of anosmia or lack of smell. And then if we see head injury and tumors can present with actual permanent damage to our sense of smell, as well as neurodegenerative disorders such as Parkinson's or genetic disorders such as Kalman syndrome can present with late onset or progressive lack of scent. And this is the olfactory nerve.